Hi there, and welcome to another interview. Today, I've got the fabulous semi-retired Bob with me, and I'm going to ask Bob the same question, ask absolutely everybody. Hey, Bob, why did you become carnivore? Well, to truly understand my carnivore journey, we have to go back to the year 1983. That's the year I was discharged from the United States military because I had gout. And the Army doctor gave me a handout on what I should eat to control the gout. When I got home and went back to my civilian doctor, he gave me the same basic handout. So that's what I did. It was lots of fruits, lots of vegetables. Don't eat fatty red meat or pork. If you're going to have meat, have chicken or fish and just a palm-sized piece, about two ounces, a couple of times a week. But avoid meat at all costs because that's what causes gout. So I go on with my life. I'm slowly getting bigger and bigger because now I know it's because of the diet. But I thought it was because I would have gout attacks and I kept getting more and more medications for the gout attacks. But nothing seemed to work. So over the next... 35 years or so, I just sort of put up with it. But I knew I was getting bigger and bigger because I was getting bigger and bigger. But every, you know, we knew it as fact at the time that all you had to do to lose weight was to eat less and move more. So every time I tried this, though, the I would eat less, but then I'd try to do a move more and exercise kind of a program but then I'd have a gout flare and I'd be laid up for a couple of weeks and couldn't do anything. So of course it just slowly piled up over the next 35 years or so. And then what that led to was I was diagnosed with type two diabetes and the nutritionist at my doctor's office gave me such wonderful advice. I can say now the only thing she said that I still follow is cheating once in a while is okay as long as you don't let the cheat become the habit, which was a very good piece of advice. Unfortunately, everything else was ridiculous because she had me on what she called a carb-controlled diet. The carb-controlled diet says that you should have between 60 and 75 carbs per meal three meals a day, and then you should have three 15 to 20 carb snacks in between. So not only did she have me eating, what does that add up to, like 250 grams of carbs a day, had me eating six times a day. And the idea was if you spread the carbs out, it will help your diabetes. And To give them credit, it did lower it a little bit. I went from an A1C of 10.3 down to an A1C, usually hovering around 9. And all of this advice just led to six and a half years ago, I had a triple bypass surgery. I was 100% blocked in two arteries, and the other one was 99% blocked all leading to the same area of the heart. So I was literally 1% away from just falling over dead. My doctor, my cardiologist, still can't believe that I walked into his office that day, but I did. This is just the way it was. So I had my triple bypass surgery, and I did get a little better, obviously, because I'm now getting blood to the heart again. That's going to have some improvements But I still had gout, I still had diabetes, and all the arthritis and all of the other problems that I had kept me from getting a lot healthier. Now, I was sitting in my trailer, because I have a little camper trailer that I've converted out of a 5x10 cargo trailer, and in the wintertime, I leave Omaha, Nebraska, because it's not nice here in the winter. So I was sitting about 30 minutes from one of the most beautiful beaches in North Carolina. And 
I was there for six months and never saw the beach because I couldn't get out of my trailer. I was literally sitting around surviving from day to day, waiting to not wake up the next morning. That was really my hope was that this is just all going to end because everything was so bad. Then as I'm getting ready to come back to Omaha, I was sitting in my trailer watching YouTube videos and I have no idea why YouTube decided to show this to me because I have always been a uh, uh, van life, camping, travel, tourism, photography kind of a YouTube user. And I truly believe that God reached into my computer and said, this is the video you need to see. And it was a video by Dante Ferrigno called 125 Days on the Lion Diet. I didn't know what the heck the Lion Diet was, but I thought, okay, I'll click on it. So I clicked on it and very quickly realized that this Lion Diet was just a more extreme version of a ketogenic diet, a high-fat diet protein-rich, meat-based diet. And of course, I can't do those because I have gout. And we knew as fact, I know as fact, for 40 years that meat causes gout. But because I'd watched his video, the next time I turned on YouTube, it came up with this country doctor that talks real funny from the middle of Tennessee named Dr. Ken Barrett. And I saw, I know that it must have been a Monday because I saw that he was going live in just a couple hours. So I set the alarm on my phone and went into his live and thought to myself, oh my goodness, I'm never going to get a question answered because there's already 2,000 people here waiting for this live stream. And it hasn't even started yet. But because I was there, I typed my question in. I have gout and cannot eat meat. Is there a version of this diet I can do? If I had known it was going to be so successful, I would have written the girl's name down. At the time, I know it was either Mitzi or Paola, because those were the two female moderators that he had at the time. But I can't remember which one it was. But one of them sent me back a message that said, Bob, meat does not cause gout. You should go to Dr. Barry's video library and look at his gout videos. So I did that. And... My first thought was, well, this guy is absolutely insane because I've known as fact for 40 years that meat causes gout. But I watched a few more of his videos, and I, that's the point where I decided, okay, the worst that can happen is this kills me. And at this point, that wouldn't be such a bad idea. So... I was on my way to visit my sister and mom in Ohio, and I didn't think it would be fair to call up my sister and say, well, you have to go back to the commissary and go grocery shopping all over again because I'm going to change my diet today. So I was scheduled to get home on May the 8th. So I got home on May the 8th and then on and went shopping for just carnivore foods. On May the 9th, the day before my 59th birthday, I went full-on carnival. Now, as I know now, that's not a great idea. You should transition gradually into it. I'm one of the lucky ones that didn't have any problems so far. I am almost two years into it now. But that, as they say, the rest is history. Before carnivore. This was about the best fist I could make with my hands being so locked up with arthritis. And now, as you can see, they work just fine. My type 2 diabetes is gone. It is cured. I went from an A1C of around 9 at the time. My A1C is now 4.8. My fatty liver disease is gone. My chronic kidney disease is gone. The doctor that I go to, you can see your past lab results in the computer. Now, it only goes back five years, so I can't see what it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago, but I can tell you that my kidney markers and my liver markers are better than they have been 
in recent history. Um, the main cause of all of my problems, the gout that started it all, I have not had a single gout attack in the 23 months I have been on the carnivore diet. Not one, not even a twinge. Um, I have spinal stenosis. I can still tell I have spinal stenosis, but instead of the debilitating pain, I don't have any pain unless I jump up and down really vigorously in an exercise. I can still feel my back hitting a little bit there. But blood pressure, I was on three blood pressure medicines. And even with the three blood pressure medicines, my blood pressure would average between 140 and 150 over 95 to 100, somewhere in that range. And I did not take it this morning, but I did take it just yesterday morning for my 23-month video that I made. And it was 116 over 68 with zero medications. Speaking of medications, I was taking 13 prescription medications in the morning and nine at night, plus pain pills throughout the day. And now I take nothing. This last spring, I lost my last medication. I was doing really good early on, but my cardiologist wanted to keep me on my blood thinner through that first winter. So I just got off of that about a year ago now when I got back from North Carolina. He said, you're doing great. When I had first gotten out of the hospital and had my first follow-up visit with my cardiologist, he said, okay, now we're going to see each other every six months till one of us dies. And at last visit, he said, you're doing great. I'll see you in a year. So that's going pretty well. Oh, and in case anybody wants to know, as a side effect, in the first year, I lost 150 pounds. And that is basically my carnivore journey. Well, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. And we spoke before about um, making sure that there's nice pauses in between so you could tell your whole story. And I was literally speechless and writing all this down because that is a list. Type 2 diabetes going down. Your A1C, incidentally, you know, halving, actually getting down to 4.8 is amazing. Fatty liver going, chronic kidney disease gone, getting off well over 20 medications. It, it, it's, it's incredible, isn't it? And then at the end, you mentioned 150 pounds weight loss. And what I really like about the way you've been talking, Bob, is you're interested in health. And this is a theme that keeps happening in my videos where... You know, I can do a picture of someone wearing their trousers or pants, as you call it in America, and, and pulling them out because the ones I used to wear, you could get two of you into them. And that does get a lot of views. It really does get people interested. Sadly, that long list of health improvements just doesn't get the clicks. You know, you have to you have to talk about weight loss. But this way of eating, the weight loss is incidental. The health comes first. And it, uh, the reason I'm over-egging this particular section is because when I get people coming on board and they don't lose weight as quick as they like, but they talk about all these other health benefits, I have to reframe it for them and say, look, how do you feel? Oh, I feel great. How are you sleeping? Oh, I feel so good. Oh, my blood pressure. Oh, that's that's great. That's much lower than it was. Look, forget the weight loss from the moment. Just forget that. It will happen. Just get yourself fit and healthy. And one of the things that I like about your story and you as a person, by the way, is how clear you are about the gout. You know, you said um, that you've not had a single gout attack in 23 months, which is amazing because you'd actually started the conversation with 35 years. You had to put up with it, 35 years. So for people that think this way of eating is not good for you, there's just too many people out there with this sort of story, I've got over 150 videos of this sort of story and over a thousand reviews of this sort of story. And it breaks my heart when you tell me about the carb-controlled diet, the the volume of carbs and the frequency. How that is good for you is just 
beyond me. Why anyone ever thought that? And that's actually what I was told when I started my diabetic training. And um, it's just so obviously not right. And I queried it from day one because it doesn't make any sense. Now, um, Ken Berry's moderators, you're right. You can doff your cap to them because these unsung people that do this sort of thing normally for free are really valuable. And Ken Berry is a particularly good influencer. And I'm I'm looking forward to hopefully meeting him in May at the PHC conference here in London next uh, in May. Yeah. So um, do you feel uh, any bitterness towards all the people that gave you this terrible advice? Or, or, or you just look back and think, well, they were doing their best. How do you view it? Well, I understand where this question comes from. Everybody, you know, that has told me all of the things that led me to this journey, it would be very easy to be bitter and angry about basically an entire life wasted. But I also believe that everything that happens to us in our life leads to the point where we are now. And where I am now is sharing my journey with other people and hopefully getting through to some people so that they don't have to go through what I went through. So if you want to call me a carnivore evangelist, that's perfectly fine. But I believe everything that happens in our life to that point creates who we are. And being bitter about where we were or what we've done in the past is counterproductive and does not help anybody. I can only continue to look forward and try to come up with better ways to get this message out to people that it is never too late to change your life. And I believe I'm a pretty good example of that. You are a fantastic example of that. Just as a little aside, just talking about getting the message out there, um, I would like people to subscribe to Bob's channel because, you know, he's got some great videos and lots to say. He's a very polite, lovely guy with a really interesting story. And we were saying beforehand how difficult it is to get YouTube to push videos about Carnivore out. So the only way to do that is to keep liking them, keep watching them and uh, just make YouTube unable to ignore the message because in the end, the advertisers want people watching the screens. And if there's people out there clicking on Bob's videos, um, then YouTube can't ignore us. So we just got to keep getting that message out. I know you have fabulous guests on there. I saw, and I saw you on um, Bart K's channel as well. So um, I'll put a link in the description to, to Bob's channel to make sure that uh, you get to see that as well. And obviously subscribe to mine if you can. That would be pretty handy. Um, I, I want to talk to you about something we have in common as well, which is um, STEM Enhance. Now, I heard you talk about the fact that you take STEM Enhance. It's one of the things I take. I, th- I attribute most of my success in my health to the carnivore diet, but I always have to do the full transparency bit and say, I do take one supplement. And um, I had a bit of a financial crisis when we moved into a new house and the roof leaked and ruined a room and we had to put tons of money into it that we weren't expecting. So I had to stop taking the STEM Enhance and I noticed a little dip uh, in my health. And then when I was able to get back on my feet with the budget, I went back on it and and felt optimal again. Um, And for those people saying, yeah, but you were stressed. No wonder your health (laughs) tanked a little bit because, you know, the, the roof leaked and all that. Well, that, you know, that wasn't the case before that happened, and I took term enhancers or a step up. So um, what's been your experience with it? Okay, I do have to preface this by saying that this is not a cause and effect relationship. The FDA does not allow me to say certain things. What I will tell you is that to understand this story, you have to understand that, you know, I went from not being able to walk to where I, while I was in North Carolina, was hiking on a trail out in the woods pretty much every day. Um, I got up to about a 15-mile daily hike down there, but that's neither here nor there. One day, 
And there's a video that shows this footage on my channel. On January the 4th of 2023, I was hiking and I fell. I, I tripped over a root and my, my hiking pole did not bite. And I went down about a 15 foot bank and landed on my right shoulder. Carnivore did heal it to about 85% of where it was. And it took about three months to get there. But it always had this clicking and popping in it as I moved my shoulder. Then I started taking stem and heats. And within the first month, I noticed that my shoulder was getting better. So I had talked to Professor K, and he said the stem enhance was the most important thing. And then we decided that I should be taking the uh, sciactive joint. But push come to shove, I just couldn't afford things. But because the, the stem enhance had done such a good job, and then I started to get benefits from the sciactive joint. I just found a way to rearrange my budget to where now I'm taking stem enhanced, the sciactive, and the plasma flow, as well as the collagen active. And what I can tell you there, again, this is not a cause and effect claim. This is just my personal experience. Having been a diabetic, my feet always felt swollen. Even though you look at them, they look just fine. But when you try to curl your toes, I had that swollen feeling, which I now know was some diabetic neuropathy starting to set in. Since taking the starting the stem enhanced products from Cerul, I've been taking them for almost a year now. And the swollen diabetic neuropathy feeling in my feet is now gone. And I still had it after a year of carnival. So was it the stem enhance or was it just another year of carnivore? I can't say for sure, but it seems rather odd that I started taking all of the Cerule products and a problem that I had had for a decade went away. Yeah. And that and that's it. It's personal experience. It's my personal experience. It's experience of people that I've coached. So I thought it was an interesting story. I, d I didn't get you on just specifically to talk about that. I was much more interested in your type two diabetes and and gout story because that um, particularly gout, because it, I think most people in the street, if you stop them and said, you know, if you had gout, what do you think would be the best thing to do? They would say, well, I think it's giving up meat. And that really is, there's no proof to that. Also, um, just on the phlebotomy side, this might interest you, I don't know, might not. Um, I often found that people with low levels of uric acid when I was doing my private blood tests could have quite bad gout and people with high levels of uric acid had none. So I didn't find, in, in thousands of blood tests, I didn't find that there was any compelling evidence that high uric acid correlated with gout attacks, to be honest. So I don't know if your uric acid was being measured, whether you've got anything you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, well, my uric acid was extremely high, but I also had, you know, all of the other problems that we didn't know about at the time, but the it, it gout is an inflammatory condition. It just is. And it's caused by, just like every other inflammatory condition in the human body, it's caused by sugar. Plain and simple. You're eating too much sugar, it causes inflammation somewhere. So the gout diet that they put me on was basically just making it worse. But we didn't know that at the time because, you know, I'm 60 years old. I'll be 61 next month. And as you can attest to, because you're about the same age I am, when we were kids, we didn't question our doctors because, well, first of all, we'd have gotten spanked if we questioned our doctors. And then... We didn't have the internet with people sharing ideas. I mean, it was in its infancy. When I was in high school, we had a single computer in the high school. 
and it belonged to the math teacher who brought it in with him on Fridays to teach his advanced math students a little bit of basic programming. The university I attended when I got back from the Army had the room full mainframe with uh, the vacuum tubes and all that stuff. I learned programming on a card reader and hole punch. We never had any terminals to use. But where was I? Oh, yeah, with with Gal. You just, it's, we didn't question our doctors. We didn't know to question our doctors. This whole question everything is fairly new. And the ability to have all of this information at our fingertips is such an amazing thing that, you know, we could have even have imagined it. Even in my late 20s, early 30s, I would have never imagined having in my pocket a phone that I can access basically every thought that has ever been thought in the world is available through my phone. Yet, of course, the primary use for one of these is to look at silly cat videos and argue with people we don't know. (laughs) Absolutely. So um, the final couple of things I want to talk about because like I say I've got you on because of the gout and type 2 diabetes is two other major things fatty liver and that's gone could you just talk a little bit about that and then we'll move on to the arthritis yeah well the fatty liver I knew I was having some pains in my side had been having pains in my side for quite some time and the last time I went to the doctor before starting the carnivore diet. He's like, it was actually right as I was starting the carnivore diet when I got home. But he, my liver markers were way out of whack. And he's like, oh, we got to get you in for a a scan and figure out what we're going to do with this. I said, well, I've just started a new way of eating that's supposed to help that a little bit. Can we wait three months and try it again? And he said, okay, yeah, I mean, you've been getting worse all this time. Another three months is probably not going to kill you. So come back in three months and we'll check it out. And that's why that was the last time I went to my primary care physician for anything because he did the all of the blood works again and my liver markers were normal. My kidney markers were normal. Everything had gotten better. And in that three month time, I forget exactly what it was. I'd lost like 80 pounds without doing any exercise yet. And all he wanted to talk about was how evil I was because I stopped taking my statin medication. And I'm like, well, you obviously are not really a doctor. You are a drug pusher. Please package up my records. I will be finding a new physician. I haven't found one yet because I don't feel the need for a physician. Unless something changes color or looks like it's about to fall off or I have pain, what do I need to go to a doctor for? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, biggest belief, doesn't that? What did what do your friend? What does your family and friends, your circle of uh, people around you, think of this way of eating? Because of all these miraculous changes, surely they're all on board and think you're doing the right thing. Oh no, they're all sure I'm going to keel over next week from a heart attack. Um, a friend of mine has, while he's not going all the way in, he has been cutting his carbs out. You know, he'll he's gotten to the point where he he. He still eats his pretzel sticks and his other bad things, but he puts them in a bowl on a scale and measures them now, which is a good first step, if you ask me. But most of them, now my sisters, my sister Judy, who is a marathon runner, um, she's been in and out of the keto lifestyle her entire life. My sister Janet, who is a retired general from the United States services, um, in her usual way, doesn't really give an opinion about whether she thinks it's a good idea or a bad idea, but 
when I first took on this journey, she asked me many questions that told her I had actually looked into it and done the research. I wasn't just jumping into something that I saw on the internet after three minutes. And that's the way she approaches things like that. Yeah, it's 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 crazy though that your miraculous return to health doesn't convince them. It it just shows how deeply indoctrinated people are. So yeah, last question. I did say because people will pick me up if I don't follow it up on the arthritis. Was there anything else you wanted to add about that? Because um, you just threw in that very simple thing about your hand was locked up and that's gone. Was that something that you didn't expect to get better, or was it was it? debilitating what what was it like yeah well when i before i started carnivore the whole reason why i decided i wanted to do this i was originally looking for a little bit of pain relief because as i said i've taken i was taking the maximum amount of lyrica and i was also taking tramadol in between the lyricas because just to get through the day and i was just i had heard in i it was in one of the dr barry videos that it would Caught, it, it would create a little bit of pain relief. And that's all I was really looking for because I couldn't even stand for two minutes. And at the time, I had told Dr. Barry, I will consider this a success if I can stand for three minutes. That will give me a lot more mobility to go do some things if I can stand for three minutes or four minutes without sitting back down. Um. <clears throat> And everything has changed. So I was just looking for a little pain relief. I sat down in front of my computer to record, I think it was the 29 pounds in 29 days video that I put out on my channel, but I had left my note sheet too far over there on my desk. And normally before carnivore, that would have required me to turn and lean forward and grab it and come back. And I was just going, getting ready to start recording, so I just reached over, grabbed it, and was looking at it. And then I realized, did I really just do that? And then I started moving my joints, and it's like, holy crap. I didn't expect any of this. I was just looking to stand a little longer. And now I can move all of my joints again. They still hurt at that point, but I could move them. Amazing. So, uh, Bob, all your all your links will be in the description for people that want to check out your uh, 29 pounds in 28 days. I mean, that's 29 pounds of weight loss in 29 days, which sounds an amazing video. And they'll now know, now know that background story as well, that you they might be able to spot in your eyes that you're so happy that you did that and got the notes without being in pain. So I'll put those links in the description. And just for the English people who know the term semi-retired as in someone that's retired but only sort of halfway done it. That isn't what semi-retired means. In America, the trucks that are in two parts are called semis. Uh, so you you used to drive a, a semi, didn't you? And, and now you don't do that anymore. So I know people in the comments will say, why didn't you ask him about the semi-retired? I think I've got that right. Is that correct? That is correct. I was an over-the-road truck driver for many, many years. After my heart surgery my sternum deformed so i could not get requalified to drive my truck and one of my clever cousins of which i have a lot of we can get into that another day if you like but she said well since you had to get rid of your truck and you can't drive it anymore does that make you semi-retired and it kind of stuck and i thought you know that's kind of clever i'm going to go ahead and go with that for my channel name and that's where semi-retired bob comes from Semi retired, Bob. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me, Stephen. It's been fun. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Your support means the absolute world to me. And if you're enjoying the show, I've got a small favour to ask you. I'd be incredibly grateful if you would consider becoming a supporter and make a small monthly donation. Your contribution will really help to improve the show. I'll be able to improve the software, maybe put a few more episodes out and do many things that I'm hoping to do in the future. Do them a lot quicker. So it's a small monthly contribution. You can cancel at any time and the link is in the show notes. Thanks very much for listening.